welcome back to the channel everyone. I'll apologise firstly for my absence. It's been quite some time since my last video. So this video here is what I've been up to the last couple of months just to bring you up to date. It's been absolutely hectic the last couple of months. Long days and a lot of hard work but I'm getting caught up on everything now and I'm excited to bring you guys along and show you everything as quite a lot has changed around the yard. So sit back and enjoy. These are just a couple of clips from the Clunes truck show back in March before I started this uh, yard cleanup job. So after this you can get caught up and we'll hopefully be back up to date and some fresh videos out. This is where I bought my first W model from. It was sitting right here in the grass. Just in there four years ago today, I'm pretty sure. There's a bit of a collection in here. It's just a truck workshop. It was right up against this crane, I think. That's where, so my YouTube profile picture was, yeah, just there. So, there you go. I just stopped in to have a look after going to the truck show. Um, yeah. So we're in the yard, there's the Takuchi there that we've been repairing to use here. We're just loading up some steel to make some room to actually work in here. So that's all big I-beam. Um, but yeah, so a bit, I'll just, standing on the crane, I'll give you a bit of a look around. This is the other yard where the white crane is. So there's all sorts of stuff. They have no idea what's in the containers, so once we make some room we'll open them up and they can decide what they want to do with everything in there. Whether we end up with what's in the containers or not, we're not sure yet. But there's a lifetime supply of steel, steel here. A couple of good track excavators, I know that's a, I think that's an International 125 there. And that's a Massey Ferguson 400 maybe? I'm not 100% sure. I haven't really been over there. We're just trying to load up. It's going to be another hot day. Um, and we don't want to be here too late. So I'll go help them load up. i uh, chain down this steel and we'll chuck a couple more things on. And I've got the tipper here. So we'll put a few of these machines up here that we're going to salvage. Some have been sitting outside for way too long and they're scrapped, just old and no, not even can't use them in a commercial setting anymore and um, no hobbyist is gonna buy that sort of stuff. I'm an extreme hobbyist and if I can't really use it, not many people would. That's my justification to it all anyway. So we'll just chain this steel down and chuck a couple more things on. So first day done, it was a busy hot day, um, but we got a load in me um, out of there and one on the on the float with Stuart. Um, so we got, yeah, I've got structural steel in the trailer, I-beams, RHS, all that sort of stuff. And then I've got sort of machines and there's a lathe and some bigger um, steel pipe and stuff in the, uh, in the truck. So yeah, we'll be back there tomorrow. Day two, we've got dad up on the crane. He's rigging up these lathes to be lifted down. Some of you will have seen I've listed them on Facebook. I've had a fair bit of interest. I've sold a couple of things, so which is good. Save a few things from getting scrapped. I haven't, haven't done any loads to scrap yet. There's obviously junk down there. But um, yeah, we should be able to save most of these machines up here. Um, yeah, so. Down and we've sent a load of PVC pipe up a 
about an hour and a half away from here. So that's gone up there. And yeah, we're getting there. Look. Oh my god, fucking More shit. Oh got a 40 foot high cube on. Got steel stacked underneath. And then we're heading home. We didn't have a chance to load the Scania today. Um, but we'll leave it up here and come back in the morning. So that's going back to the yard. It was a bit sketchy lifting that on with the crane. Um, that couldn't make it on YouTube because um plenty of violations in that one so but yeah it's all happening just started the crane up we're gonna go unload that 40 foot container if this doesn't unload it we'll use the two the two excavators but this should do the job so I'll go get it set up the other way because if, if it goes on that it'll go over yeah but because that's the flat tire too so it won't hold it i would um go around and go up
just loading a little sight dumper in to the back of the tipper, little eight wheeler. It's got a little three cylinder Kubota in it. Just tell him to jet. Tap boom down. Perfect fit. Look at that. Can I leave the slings on it? No, we bought three sets of lifting chains. Yeah, it's all right. Look at it. It's cool, it's got what, 650 hours on it. A little three cylinder Kubota. I don't know if I can, oh yep, there we go. Look at that. I don't know what brand it is or anything, but it'll be sick. I like it. It needs new tires, I think, but. So this is a bit of the yard. I should have showed you this a bit earlier, but we've taken three containers out of there. A couple of good track excavators over there that might make a bit of a project, we'll see. Um, Atkinson with a 692 in bits. A Bedford. So, yeah, a lot of stuff we're trying to get to save from the scrap, but uh, yeah, Crane's doing a good job. Some of these containers are pretty heavy. So it's definitely on its limit. And um, there's a dog trailer for a hook bin there. A two axle semi flat top with container pins. A whole heap of steel. Some conveyor belts, gonna use those on the crushing plant. But we've got a lot of stuff in here to sort out. But it's getting there. We've taken a fair few loads out, so it's getting better. They should have a reasonably tidy yard soon, hopefully. So yeah, we'll stay at it and I'll show you anything else interesting that comes up. So I'm just carefully trying to lift this dumper out without doing any damage to it or dropping it.
I have to put it in the shed and do a bit of a will at start on it. Because I want to have a play. She needs some new tyres, but... And a bit of a clean out. But it'll definitely go again, I reckon. I haven't seen if it turned over, but... It's only a little three-cylinder Kubota, so... There. I'll be able to get another one if I have to. The trailer's just got junk in it, so... That's nothing exciting. I'll unload that and we'll come back to it. So we've got a Massey Ferguson 400 here. We're just getting ready to winch it up on the drop deck. Um, it's got a six cylinder Perkins in it. Um, I don't know, it says a 354. So that might be what it is, but she's uh, got a bit of water in it. So I'm not sure if it's gonna be any good. Air intakes open. Got Seems to have good tracks. Yeah, tracks are pretty good. There's no rippers on the rear, but there is another one over in the other yard over there, so we might be able to make one out of the two, was my thinking. I had a Massey Ferguson 500, and it was pretty good. It was a, um, it had a V8 Perkins in it, a V8 540, so, um, yeah, that's the that one and then over here we've got an international 125 i think it's a 125e this one doesn't have a series e power shift the grousers are a bit worn on this one but it doesn't appear to have water in the oil so it may be okay i'm hoping but if not we'll make something of it we don't want to scrap it so we're going to drag both of them up on the on the drop deck. This one's got a wrecking ball in the bucket, which is pretty cool. But yeah, we're just going to drag them back to the shed. We've done a fair, we've got a fair bit of room now, but we've still got a lot of a lot of junk. So, but it's definitely getting there. So, um it's no point me telling you now, but you guys won't see this for a while because there's been some issues and some people complain and stuff. So there'll be no YouTube video, sadly, until until it's all done because there's some difficult people out there in the world, but so, which isn't ideal, but it is what it is. We'll, I'll just keep all these documented and catch up on them. The other thing with this one is it's missing a tilt cylinder. Um, but other than that, it appears to be pretty complete. And I've, I've got another international at home behind the shed, which may be similar. Looks like the alternator's missing off it. Oh, it's actually a turbo too. I didn't know that. This is probably, this would have been a good little track excavator. Probably have plenty of go, so we'll have to, we'll have to seriously look at this one it might be a, a good little little project i reckon so yeah there we go we'll get it winched up on the trailer it turned a little bit then stopped probably oh, i'll go have a look hang on It's got no weight on them. It's sitting on it, but. It would have been sitting here since about 2017, probably this one. It turned a little bit, so I'd say the track chains, the track chains are seized, but it's definitely a good, good winch. This one. The real test will be when the grousers grab on the um, the bars. But yeah, it's a real lifesaver. The trailer. Is that going to hit, Stuart? That's no good. It may, it may just push shut 
and skip over them. How come? Well, that should get closer to the bucket. Should. Worst case, you can drag drop deck forward and start again. The bucket's just going to hit on the ramps, but hopefully it closes up. Go a little bit at a time and just... It's closing. Or, or we can chain and dog it shut. Let me just see if I can find the lever to pull it to see if it'll um if it'll close. Yeah, I've pulled the lever back, but we can chain and dog it. I don't know. I think it's just like shuttle shift forward and reverse. There's no gearbox to put in. But they rolled a little bit and stopped, so I don't know if it's... Try, try again. that max it out did it we got the snatch block back in there to the front here to try and uh, get it up yeah it's going the tracks are rolling the tracks are rolling too They must be fairly stuck. Go around this side because cables and chains and braking and scary stuff. The chains are fairly seized. She must have been sitting there a while. We've got delicate Stuart on the buttons here. Look at him. The thing over the, the other side. Yeah, let it up, I'll move it. We just move the, the hook over to the other side. It's going. Look at how tight those chains are. Both, both sets of chains, the chains pulling it and the track chains. Look at it, it's moving. They're going, Stuart. Ooh. 
Look at it. It's like a new one. Yeah, right, might put on time lapse now so you can uh, just watch it go up the rest of the way. Aren't we? Yeah, as far as Alright, we've got the International 125 hooked up. Tracks are struggling on this one too. But, oh no, they're starting to turn. We reckon this one would have ran when it was parked here because it looks a lot better than the other one. So. Because that ram's off, we've got it chained back and it's missing both four and one rams. So, we've got Dad in the digger, he's just going to try and steer it over. Go! Dad! Do you want him on the front? Uh, pull the, pull the back of the and then just pull, pull the bucket across. Yeah. Just let it off. I'll put the chain more in the center. Yep. Give it a little bit more, Dad. Well, it's probably the back. Once that, once the front of the track here grabs on the ram, he can pull the back across. Oi, Dad, just hold it across until it hits the ramp and then pull the back across. Okay, going, Stuart. Yaps up and then reach around and go on the
down with a load of junk, got the two track excavators, bunch of crates on the front, so we're ready to head back to Geelong. So we'll come back tomorrow and do it all again, take another load of stuff. We go from there, yeah, we'll catch you back at the yard when we unload. Well, we got them back to the yard. This is our lay down area. We've got the containers and all the excavators here with chains because we've been lifting the containers and steel and everything heavy. So yeah, we'll, we'll unload them here. That's the Komatsu that needs an engine rebuild. She breeds a bit heavy once she warms up, but we'll get it unloaded. So we're just getting ready to drag this Atkinson out. It's got a 6V92 in it, same as my W model, but the engine's in bits. It's got a head off it. Um, and it's got a hook lift on the back. Sorry, that's some sort of in the way. So we're gonna winch it up on the drop deck and a bit of crane action because it's got a broken uh, drag link. Um, it's very spiky so I can't get a good look but you can see the cylinders in there so don't know what we'll do with it but we'll drag it back to the shed and have a look at it and for you guys that know walking beam in the rear is rough on a truck but just imagine walking beam on the front I have no idea if this is a custom build but it's got Hendrickson walking beam in the front. It's a twin steer, obviously, but it's it's walking beam in the front and rear. They've got some cab shockers on it there, I'd say, that they would be well and truly needed. 
so that's pretty crazy. But we'll get it out and have a better look. Um, we just lifted up those big base plates over there. Yeah, the big base plates off this radial drill. Oh, it's falling over. That's an eight foot radial drill. Um, an OD2, fully assembled. It weighs about eight or nine ton. The di it's, it's got about a six inch thick diameter um, main post. So she's a real beast. It's a shame it's been left outside for so long. Um, but we lifted the base plate up off the ground and underneath it, there was a bunch of little baby snakes. I didn't get my phone out quick enough because we um, sort of, it dragged the base plate over it and buried them a bit, but they'll still be alive under there and probably come out when we stop making noise. So we reckon the big snakes are probably living in this base plate. So weren't game to put our hand back in there and grab that chain out because who knows what's living in there. We're just moving crap ready to get the Atkinson out pretty much. So
got the big Atkinson on and we're heading back to Geelong. I'll give you a good walk around when we get back to Geelong and you can see it. So here's the big twin steer Atkinson off the off the drop deck. You can have a bit of a look at it. Now that it's out of the blackberry bush, it's prickly shit. That must be some sort of stabilizer cylinder or something. A leg that comes out and goes on the ground when you're picking up maybe. Got tubeless, uh, tubed 1020 tires on the back with Hendrickson walking beam. Half a tank of fuel that would be at least 15 years old, I would say. Tubeless tires on the front. This is something I've never seen before here. So you guys think walking beam's rough on the back? Just imagine walking beam on the front and the back. So I'd say someone has made this walking beam set up. You can see it's still got the original shackle mounts there, but someone's bolted, made up these brackets for the walking beam to go onto the axle where the U-bolts would go. And they've made up these hangers. It's a 1979. Um, doesn't say what engine. I'm just reading it because I haven't looked at it before. We'll have a look at that a bit later. Spiky. Uh, there's the head off it. It's got a good AC compressor mount and AC compressor for the W model though. So that's one bonus. Transmission. I'm not sure what one that is yet. We collected a tree going through town. The stack just grabbed it. It's got a 90 degree drive to then a power steering box. So just keep, I think someone's made all this, keep in mind, like all the twin steer part of it. I reckon it was a single steer probably, and someone's converted it. I'll get up in here and see how many spiders are up here. It's a long way up. Full of possum or rat shit 400,000 k's comes with a level in it so you don't tip it over turbo timer Ooh, that's a better stopper than what I have for my W model look at that prickly blackberry bush even growing in here mm. but it's actually not too bad in here roof mount AC would have been a good truck before it was parked up so there you go that's the end of part one uh, that's pretty much all I recorded out of the first yard. It was all the interesting stuff. 
obviously there was a lot more uh, that we did. There was steel and crates and all sorts of random stuff that we loaded on in a hurry just to get that yard tidied up and done and on to the next one. So I thought I'd get you up to speed on that first and then yeah, next week I'll hopefully have the second part out which is pretty much cleaning up the the second yard. There was uh, a lot more machines in the second yard and a few more interesting things. It took us a lot longer. It only took two weeks to do the first yard. It took five to six weeks to clean the second yard up and inside the shed. So, but yeah, I'll get you up to speed on that next week. I just wanted to get a video out so you guys knew that I was actually still alive and and well. Um, I've had plenty of messages and people asking where I've been, so I appreciate uh, the support and you guys checking up on me. I've got the chief camera uh, editor here, Moose. Moosey, Moose, asleep on the job. Moosey, hey. Ah, oh, there we go. Yes, you good boy. Yeah, so uh, I'll get this video up for you guys. And hopefully some of you are still stuck around and remember me. So, and yeah, next week, hopefully I can have another one out. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.